Tonight, the Ashkenazim are starting Slichot. With the Sephardim, we started already Slichot three weeks ago. I don't know if you did every night Slichot, but you know, these days we're already starting to do Slichot. Some people do every night, some people do every week. Depend each one. The Ashkenazim are starting tonight. Most of us coming in the Slichot, we don't have an idea what we're saying there. Aseleman, Shmach, Amen, Yitach, Amen, Amen, Rachamana, Nada. Do you understand something? Rachamana, Itkarlan, Kemed, Yaakov, Echima. Somebody understand what it meant? No. Medil by Yavo, what it meant? Anav by Yavo, okay. Like this, we go all this before. And it's amazing, amazing to feel, and we don't have an idea what's going on here. I explain you a few parts of this before, and these kavanot you can have when you're praying in the filot of Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and everything. I don't know if I have time before Rosh Hashanah to explain you all the filot, but something amazing. We're going to go to the main part, and we're going to get to the Kiyat Shofar. That's going to be at Monday, next Monday. And when Kiyat Shofar comes, everybody gets very emotional. Wow, Kiyat Shofar. And most of the people don't have an idea what they are. What to be mechabe? What to do? They're putting the talit on the head and they just do like this. Hashem, Shofar. What else? I don't know, but that's what we need to do. Nobody knows nothing. What's the Kavanah? How it works? I want to teach you. The Shofar is something really special. Why it's special? I explain you this, and that's going to be the Torah that we'll learn tonight. The Shofar is something not normal. And I'll teach you the Kavanot. When you're going to hear the Shofar blow, you hear the blowing Shofar, you're going to know what to be mechabe. Also, you're going to know the reason why you're using Shofar. I'm going to start with a question. Think one of us was driving on 200 uh, kilometers, I don't know, in miles, how much is that? 100 miles an hour. You're driving on a road. How, how much are you allowed to drive in the United States? 65. 100 is too much? 110, okay? A cop gets me. He gives me a ticket. Another paper, he wants to take me to the court. And two months after coming to the court, I look at the judge and I recognize him. This guy, every afternoon, was sitting down with my grandfather, playing with him cards on the restaurant at the coffee shop. So he's starting to, the judge is asking me, you're driving so fast, I need to put you in jail. So I'm standing, I'm telling the judge, your name is Reuven? He says, yes. Familia is uh, Cohen? He says, yes. You play Sheshbesh twice a week in the coffee shop? Yes, yes. You play with a guy named David? Yes. And uh, you know who's David? My father. He looks at me and says, okay. He says, because you play with my father, Sheshbesh, so don't give me, I see you want to give me three months in jail. Give me a week and a half, you know, you're the friend of my father. So because my father's your friend, so. What do you think the American judge is going to tell me? He's going to tell me, you're right, I thought to give you three months, but because it spoke like that, you're going to get now six months. To be sure that I'm not the friend of your father now. Because if he's going to do that, he's not going to be a judge anymore. We're coming to Rosh Hashanah, we're telling God, God, you know who we are? You know, it's Hakavino, I'm his son. Oh, really? You know, Yaakov Avino? Yes, we're the grandson. And says, ah, oh, you're talking to me like this, now I'm going to hit you double. So why all the Tvinah we see Hashem, it's Hakavah? That's doing the situation worse, sir. You want Jehovah from God? This is the idea of the shofar, this guy here and everything. I saw, there was a story of, uh, in the Far East, there was a king, talking about hundreds and hundreds of years ago. This king was very good. He was elected, and all the nation loved him, but nobody respected him, because he was not doing nothing. You know in America, when you want to be a good president, whatever you're going to do, if you're not going to advertise it, show it to everybody, nobody's going to think it seriously. Everything that president is moving, he's going to the TV and the news, look what I did, look what I did. But this king was very honest. He did everything for the nation, but he didn't do nobody. So nobody respected him. Everybody, ah, that's the king, ah, kaparata bonot. There was one old person that he cared from that king. And he said, why everybody don't respect him? He went inside the first house, he knocked on the door, he told that. I know the king is good, what do you think about him? He said, this is a good king? Mm. He says, you know what he's doing for you? One, two, three, four, five, giving all time. And the people now say, seriously, that's what the king is doing for us so much? We didn't know that. He says, because he's an honest king. He's not advertising what he's doing. He says, wow, thank you. Now we're going to start to respect him. He went to the second house. This old guy. And he says, what do you think about the king? Terrible. What do you mean terrible? He sat down a half hour, gave him stories what the king does. We didn't know. We're going to start to respect him. This old person never got tired. He went from a house to house, from village to village, city to city, and not stopping, talking with everybody, respect this king, he's something amazing, we don't know him. Like this he did 30 years. After 30 years, the king is feeling that the state is changing, people are starting to love him, to respect him, 
just who does everything for me? This old person. So he came to his palace, he said, I want to bring this old person to my palace to tell him thank you very much. He's telling his secretaries, find where this old person is living. They came after two hours, they said, we found where he's living, we have a problem. He passed away. Really, when? Four days ago. What? 30 years I was waiting, not asking him nothing. Now when he passed away, I'm looking for him. Okay, now four days, the kids are sitting still Shiva, I'm running the Daos. They took the level, they drive the Daos, of the, that time no level, the donkey, whatever. But they want the Daos of the, of the old person, they see the kids sitting Shiva. The king did inside and he asked, who's the behold, who's the biggest one? One kid says me. The king went to him, started hugging him and crying. He told him, you don't know what your father did for me. I never told him thank you. And now I'm feeling so bad, I want to thank him. I don't know how. Well, you a son. And I respect your father so much, so you're going to be the, my vice, the vice president, the vice king, whatever. Mishnah Lamelech. He told the king, thank you very much, I don't need that. I'm happy in my small farm, small house. He says, you know what, you don't want to be that, okay? So I'm going to give you millions of dollars. Thank you what your father did. He says, I don't need money. My life, okay? Oh, you don't want money? So I'll give you real estate. You can have land. He says, I don't need real estate. I have a little bit of land here, planting vegetables, that's okay. So what do you want from me? I don't want nothing. The king says, wow, you're so special like your father. You don't want from me nothing. One thing I'm going to give you. He takes out a pen, he writes a telephone number. He's giving it to him. And he's telling him, when your life is going to be in trouble, one day, this is my secret form. Nobody in the world has it. Only me and the head of the army. That's only for emergency cases. I'm giving it to you. If Hashem wants in your life, your life is going to be in danger, you call to this telephone, I'm going to go all over the world to save your life. What your father did for me, I'm going to do for you. So don't forget me. When your life is going to be in one day in trouble, call to this number. You know, I'm going to destroy all the world to get you and save you. He took the paper with the number, put it in his pocket. They told the king, thank you very much. They sat down a half hour talking. The king left, and everything was over. They finished the Shiva. They're going back to life. The son of the old person didn't, look like, didn't go like his father. He wanted a different type of life. He went to the friends with the neighborhood and slowly, slowly started teaching him how to break inside cars, to steal the radio tape, whatever. Afterwards, he learned how to steal the car. Afterwards, they started to steal houses. And they got very professional and they started to steal banks now. And the son of the old person, he was the head of all the mafia. And they're the best professional uh, criminals. They know how to do, I don't know, you saw the movie Ocean Eleven, whatever, something like that. They're the best. And they know how to get it safe, banks, everything. Now they're starting to destroy the economy of the country. All the banks are trouble, they're breaking it. They know how to do everything the best. The king says, we're stopping everything. We're going to catch these guys. Two years down, the deal of these robbers, but they're, best. they're better than the police. They know how to run right away. But one day, they, they went on a bank. There was a big ambush next to the bank of the police. They're starting to break in the bank. The police jumped at them. And all the group of the criminal were catch, all the 20. And the head of the criminal, the son of the old person. The king was so angry. Breaking news, party, catch them, all the country's crazy. The king was so angry, he's calling the court and he says, what do you want to do with them? Yeah, we're going to judge them, we're going to see them. The king says, look, I'm the king. I'm the head of the head of this country. I want to be the judge. The head of the court is asking, why you? He says, because if you're going to judge, you're going to say to kill, you're going to go to a higher court, they're going to... If the king says, dead is dead, alive, alive, I don't want games and I want everything to be fast, that's going to affect the country, then nobody's going to be like that again. Okay. Everybody's coming to the court after two weeks. Everyone has the best lawyer in the country. They're rich robbers. They have the best lawyers. The judge goes inside, he takes this, uh, the ham of the schnitzel, you know, like something for wood, knocking on it, and he says, guys, I'm not going to judge. The lawyer is telling him, what do you mean? You are the judge. He says, I'm sorry. The king is going to judge. You understand what he means? He says, why the king? Because the king doesn't want games. If he's going to say death, it's going to be death. And straight they're going to kill everybody. One of the best lawyers standing up and says, the judge, when the king is going to start a judge him? In two weeks, three weeks? He says, in five minutes. He's in the room here inside. He's waiting for me to finish. He wants to go inside. All the lawyers are looking on the clients. They do put their hand on what they can do. Do something. We cannot. The king goes inside, he's angry, everybody stands up. Each robber has ink of the cop next to him. The king takes out papers and he's starting to read. After two minutes, everybody understands. 
that in the next four hours, all the 20 robbers are going to be dead. And the king is reading, why did he kill them? Why did he kill them now? And why we did a video how they're killing them and show it to all the country. And, wow, the robbers don't know what to do. The lawyers don't know what to do. The son of the old person, he has the handcuffs. The cop next to him, he tells the cop, you see what's going on in here. Soon he's going to finish the talk, they're going to take us and kill us. You're not sad to see 20 people dead soon? The cop says, between you and me, I'm very sad. He says, you can help me? The cop says, yeah. Yeah, but say no, no. He says, yes. You can give it to me one second? He says, no way. <laughs> you, you want to speak in the setup when the king is talking? They're going to kill you and me together. How I let you? He told him, look, I have the best lawyer in the world. I could call him now. He's going to come and save the situation. If you're not going to give me the setup, me and 20 people are dead. Please give me the phone. The cop doesn't know what to do. He's feeling worse. He says, you know what? Take the phone. You're going to get 30 seconds. Bend under the table and talk. If somebody catches you, go out of the table and throw the phone on the floor. But never nobody sits to talk on the phone when the king is talking down the judge. Okay. He gives him the phone. He takes a paper out of his pocket. And he's dialing very fast the number. The king is reading, reading the paper. The middle is reading. His emergency phone, his jacket, starting to ring. He's telling the guys, guys, something happened in the country. One minute to break. He stands up, he turns around, takes out the telephone. He says, look what happened. He hears a voice that doesn't recognize. Hello, I'm talking to the king. He says, yes, who are you? He says, the king, you can help me? He says, what do you mean, help me? It's a secret phone, how, how you got my secret phone? Who are you? He says, why did you help? Please help me now. Who are you, how you got my phone? He says, you want to know who I am? He looks straight, he looks straight here. You see a cop here, a guy next to him was a Samsung. He says, that's me. How you got my secret phone? He says, you remember years ago you got my phone and you told me, if my life is going to be in danger, I'm going to call to this phone. You're going to change all the world to save my life. I'm telling you my life in danger. In a few minutes, they want to kill me. Please come and help me. The king shut the phone. He says, the God, take him out of the anchors. Come to me. Everybody looks at him. The king comes. He says, you have my secret phone? That's the cannot to you nothing. You're free. Go home to your family. The guy is starting to go out of the room. And he's coming back to the king. He said, the king, man, I'm going to go to my family. What are my 20 friends? The 20 friends, they're going to kill them. I need Havruta every night to learn. What's wrong with them? <laughs> the king says, what do you want from me? He says, also my 20 friends, let them go home. The king said, but these are the biggest criminal of the country. If I'm going to let them home, everything's going to be destroyed. He says, but the king, I'm your friend. You know, I have a secret phone. For me, you can let them go. He says, you know what? You and all the 20 criminals, they're going to go home. You're free. All the people stand up in the jungle starting to scream to the king, what are you doing? These are the worst people in the world. So I cannot do nothing. They have my secret code. Without my code, they need to give them everything. All the people were standing and said, these guys are amazing. They know how to work. They have the code of the king. They're changing the world with it. You didn't know Rosh Hashanah is coming. Who's judging us? God. God is sitting on the chair and no games. Chaim, Chaim. Death, death. Moving money, moving money. We cannot do nothing. It's God judging us. So we're coming to Rosh Hashanah, we're praying, we don't know what to do. We remember that moment that we had an old grandfather. The name of the grandfather was Abraham Abinu. He went all over the world and he told people, you know, this king is so special. He showed everybody who's God. And before Abraham Abinu did the Kedat Yitzchak, after the Kedat Yitzchak, God gave Abraham Abinu the Shofar and he told him, take it. This is my secret telephone. And I'm going to give you the secret numbers. Do, 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 do. That's the secret code of God. We don't know what is that. But secret code. And he's telling Abraham, if one day your life is going to be in danger, take my secret phone, the sofa, use the secret codes, whatever you want, you're going to get. We're coming in Rosh Hashanah. We don't know what to do. God is judging us. Maybe life, maybe death, we don't know what to do. That's the moment we're taking the sofa and we're starting to blow it. And God hears it and he says, wow, who has my secret codes? He's looking down, he says, ah, that's the son of the old person. Okay, yeah, all the Jews are giving them life. So all the angels of the Gleam are coming to God and he says, God, what are you doing? You're giving to all the Jews life. You know how they react over here. God is telling him, you're right. But Asherei Ha'am Yudei Etruah. This is the nation that they know my secret code. So whatever they want, they're going to get. I cannot do nothing for them. And a week and, and one day you're going to stand and the Shofar is going to start running. The moment the Shofar is running, the mercy in the Shomayim is so strong. When God says, these guys have my code. What they want, they're going to get. That's the reason when they're blowing the shofar, this is the moment that's the strongest minute of the year. Whatever you want, you can ask. 
And at this moment, nobody can say nothing. Why? This is the secret called running. Especially on the first 30th kilo. Because that's the first 30th kilo from the Oraita. That's the place that you can hit the strongest. And in Rosh Hashanah, you're not allowed to say Avonot. You know, somebody's feeling in the middle of Rosh Hashanah, wow, God, they did Avonot. So you're not allowed to do it, right? But on the second you're going to say the word Avonot, Yetzirah is going to come to God, God, this guy is Avonot. Yeah, like, kick him out of the world. So Rosh Hashanah will come in with jackets, suits, happy. No Avonot. But when the Shofar is running, the mercy is so strong, you can start to say Avonot also. God, I'm sorry, I did this, I did that. Yetzirah cannot hear it, right? He says, now they're using the secret code. Nobody can speak with God. He loved these guys. And this is the moment that when you pray in the Shofar for your family, for your relatives, for Atzlacha, for Torah, you're going to get it. Because this is the moment nobody can stop you. The code is running in the Shemaim and you get whatever you want. That's the reason when the Shofar is going to come in one week and day, and one day, you need to know this is the moment that if you're going to lose it, you can lose all the year for that. And if you're going to get it and you're going to hit strong in this moment, your year is going to look different. But you need to know in this minute how they're good. But some people are coming in these moments and they don't know what to ask. They're asking Shtuyot. Each one has Shtuyot in his head and they're starting to ask him, Hashem, my father promised me BMW, Hashem. Yeah, I have humbling in this world, they ask each to you at every time. That the moment is coming, they're not asking the right things. I'll finish with another example. Different king. It was a king that everybody loved him. So he wanted to check his country if the country loves him. He wanted to stand on a cliff. Under the cliff, a river. A very rough river that the water of the river is very white. And on the second side of the river, another cliff. The king told all the people of the city, all the people stand on one side of the cliff and I'm going to stand on one side. But that's what happened to this king. I don't know, that's what he wanted. And that afternoon, all the city, five, six thousand people on one side, the king alone on one side. And the king was screaming to the people of the city, You love me? Everybody's screaming, Yeah. He said, no. You love me? Everybody, Yeah, yeah. Again, you love me? No. Okay. The king said, Okay, if you love me, who could jump down to the water, swim to me, and climb to the cliff to my side? Whoever loves me, to jump and come to me. I want to see who loves me. <laughs> Whoever jumps down, I'll never show up. What's gonna happen? Nobody jumped. The king says, I thought you loved me. Whoever loves me, jump down to the water, swim the right river, and come to me. Everybody looks if you're gonna jump, maybe you're gonna die from the stones. And if not from the stones, the water's gonna take you. And if not, maybe you're gonna get hit because the water's so rough. And how are you gonna cl climb the cliff? Nobody jumped. And the king started to scream, I thought, you love me, but I see nobody wants to jump and get his life danger for me. And the king is starting to cry. In that moment, a guy 90 years old jumped from the cliff, boom, in the water. 6,000 people stop breathing. And they see how the water is taking him very fast. And he's catching one of the stones, and he's climbing, and he's trying, and he's jumping to another stone. Until he got to the second side of the river, it was something dramatic, the door is going to be dead. He got to that, he started climbing the cliff, the kid could not handle it. A guy 90 years old, he went down the cliff halfway, he met the old person, he started hugging him and crying. He says, from all the 6,000 people, only you really love you jumped to the water for me. What do you want I'm going to give you? The guy says, the king, I'm 90 years old. I don't need nothing in my life. You know? Either food, no teeth. What do you want me to ask for you? He says, I'm going to give you money. He says, I don't need money. I'm going to be sold in the grave under the ground, two meters. What do I need money? No, I'm going to give you a gigantic tower in the central of the downtown. He says, what am I going to do in the tower? I need two meters under the ground. I need a tower. I'm going to bring the guy. He says, so I'm going to give you this. He says, no, I don't need nothing. So the king says, you're nuts. I'm standing next to you crying. Tell you ask, no ask something. I don't want nothing. The king got angry at him. Just, you're nuts. This is the only chance in your life that the king wants to give you, and you don't want nothing. There's not need nothing. So the king asked him, so why you jumped? He said, I didn't jump. Somebody pushed me. What do you want from me? <laughs> he said, okay, how old they pushed you? Okay, but now you're already standing next to me. So ask something already. You did it. He said, you know what? That's the guy that threw me down the cliff and beat him up. The king took his shoe and smacked him on the face. <laughs> That's what you're asking me to beat up the guy that threw you in the water. Ask gold, whatever you want, you're going to get. Rosh Hashanah, that's what's going to happen when the guilt is coming and God is going to be so connected. God says, ask. And be careful what you're asking. Some people are asking real stupid. I don't know what's going on in the heads of guys your age. But 50% of our things are seriously, and 50% are usually nonsense. Usually, that's our life. And we need to know when to hit the serious thing with the nonsense. That's only tonight speaking about shofar to understand when you're going to come to the shofar that something not take a strong and you're going to have a better year.
שבוע טוב, Welcome to the guys that came for the new year, have a tzlacha here in Eretz Israel, I hope you're going to stay and enjoy your morning Torah and stay Shana Bet, like these guys. Shana Aleph, stay Shana Aleph, but enjoy your morning Torah every minute. These years are not going to come back. The Torah you're learning now, that's going to be the Torah of your life. And I see people today, 30 years old, 40 years old in New York, Panama, all over the world. I see them, when they have Yerat Shamayim, I see from where it's coming. It's coming from these moments that when Yeshiva and learning. People that were learning these years good, when they get to 30 and 40, you see them stable in life, happy. People that didn't take it good, you see the guys already old, the kids are not are messed up, what's going on with you? When we're young, we're hitting good. And when you learn Torah young, you grow up with crystal life. You have only one year chance to learn Torah. The life is rough, you need to go back to New York, college, business, Balagan, it's not easy to life. Now you have an easy year to learn Torah, don't miss the moment, because it's going to change all your life. And every minute you can learn Torah here, when you're going to grow up, your life is going to be better. Shavuot, Torah,